Hi and welcome to another Flutter tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about two things. One is auto login, and the second one is how to pass data between screens. So for auto login, uh, the BookBite application basically allow user to enter the application main screen, main page, without having to log in. However, once user registered their account, they can log in with their account credential and access the main page. However, data or the user data that um, required uh, by all the screens, they are no longer, they are not available yet. So, the login and registration, um, which basically insert user credential or user information into database, will require to be what we call as so we need to create a, a data model for that. So, for example, for the user login here, so when user log in by using this credential um, and this basically handle through the login page here. Uh, what we need now is to be able to create what we call as a data model for user. So the data model for user uh, usually uh, require what we call as a user class. So the user class that uh, I created here is basically contain the following variables and methods. So the user class consists of uh, five variables, um, user ID, user email, user name, user password, and user date registration. So this basically um, defined as a user class. Um, and the second section here, this is um, the class constructor, which basically will assign value to the to variables in the class when we create an object. Um, the from JSON um, method here, this is basically allow for the application to create user object directly from JSON data that we retrieve from API. So when the from JSON invoke and pass with the array with the data, um, we can add uh, the, the application automatically extract or the method basically extract all the data and then assign to the variables that we have here. Um, the second method that we have here, this is only if we want to convert back to JSON data. However, we rarely use this method uh, unless required. All right, so this is what we call as a data or we call it um, data model. Uh, which we're going to use this to create an object. So when user log in by using the credential, both credential here, and this is basically handled in this uh, login user um, method. So the login user method here will take um, email and password from, from the controller uh, and then pass email and password to HTTP post array. Um, and then the URL or the, the backend script that going to handle the data, basically uh, through loginuser.php. And the data will be passed to loginuser.php uh, through the body session because we pass the data by using post array. And then we wait for the response from the server. So if the response status code equal 200 means that it is a success um, in terms of the HTTP request. So the data that we receive back from the back end will be decoded back by using the JSON decode. Um, and then we check for the status success from the data. Um, and then from the data section of the JSON, uh, uh, JSON uh, read, uh, read response. And then uh, convert, uh, and then we check for the status success. So if the status success, uh, what we, we need now is to create a user object. 
Okay, so here we have a user object and the user object use the from JSON. So if you remember the from JSON here, so this is the from JSON. So the from JSON method um, basically will use the data that the data array that comes from the data status from the JSON response. All right, so uh, and then it will automatically create user data object. And then the user data object uh, consists of all the data that written from the response. So the object here, then we can pass around. Okay, we can pass around um, between screens. So this navigator.push basically uh, just an update uh, from the navigator, uh, which now will require passing data to the constructor. Um, however, uh, for the main page, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the the screen or the, the page uh, for, for our application, which is, uh, which is here. So this is our main page here. So what, what it does basically, uh, when we log in, it basically create this object. And then we want to pass data to the main page. Okay, we want to pass this user data here to the main page. And one of the way that we can pass the data is through the class constructor. So the class constructor here, uh, the main page class constructor. So if we look at the main page, back to the main page, um, we can see uh, that the main page stateful widget here consists of this or this uh, the following uh, user definition. So the final user class, which is uh, this user class, um, which is uh, we we create uh, just a var uh, just an object uh, value here called user data or whatever the uh, the the object uh, definition that we can put it names there. Um, but here I use user data, um, and then the constructor will require an update. So we can see that the the main page constructor now. They basically aided with required this dot user data means that the class, the main page class, and then user data, and then pass through the constructor. And then when we create the or when we initiate the main page again, uh, it will automatically pass with this user data. All right. So we pass to the main page. Um, however, um, the main page basically uh, interrelated with other classes, um, which is one of the which is uh, one of the uh, main class uh, or being referred to uh, is this class called my drawer, because we we know that each of the class here, each of the drawer uh, parameter for each of the uh, of the uh, first layer um, menu consists of this my drawer. Okay, so and that will require us to update the my drawer class. Okay, so as you can see, the my drawer class they ask two by two value here. So one is a page, and the other one is user data. Um, to pass around the uh, object which is the user data object or the user object here okay so we need to update the drawer or the my drawer class with two additional parameter and the, the, the reason that uh, why i use page uh, string parameter here is just to indicate that um, this is basically belong to the main page so i put books um, and then uh, the other uh, the other parameter that i pass to the my drawer class is the class itself and uh, the way that we pass the class is basically we call up widget dot user data means that this current class widget and then the user data that basically comes from this okay so we want to pass around so we need also to pass the user data all right so uh, once we have the data and then we we need to go to the my drawer and inside the my drawer here you can see there are two um object um, one is string object page and the other one is a user data object so the constructor for the my drawer here we can see that being updated or being added with two required parameter 
One is the page string and the other one is an object user for user data. So now the constructor my drawer will require these two additional parameters. And we know that the my drawer class here is being called by other classes. Uh, for example, the order page, the profile page, uh, the uh, community page. So then we need also to update those uh, classes. Uh, for example, the order page here, as we can see, we have that. Um, and for the profile page, we have the same also for the uh, community page also, we have the user data uh, object defined and together with the uh, constructor updated. So we need to update those also. Um, um, and then um, the each of the um, drawer here also will have uh, to pass around the data, okay, the, the object data here. Um, so to be able to show the data itself, okay, like for example, when uh, when user successfully log in here, okay, successfully log in with the credential um, uh, from the login page here. So it basically passed to the main page, and then now the main page um, able to have the data, which is uh, this data here, um, and the data is being printed in the main page and being uh, outputted in the main page in the in the center body here. So as you can see, uh, we can have uh, the data printed uh, through text widget. And to print the data, we can just call widget dot user data dot call the variables that we have from the user data object. And then to string, which is just to convert the data to string value. And the same with uh, user email down there. All right, so that's basically um, how do we pass data from one class to the other class, which is the UI class. Um, however, um, we also need to understand that the application, when they, out, they, they first, uh, first open the application, we don't have the credential. We don't have the, the user information. Um, so how do we do that? Okay, so that basically can be achieved through auto login. And for this application, the auto login procedure implemented through the splash page here. Okay, so the um to implement auto login because we don't have the data right when we run the application. Okay, so that that's the main issue here. So when we first run the application uh, from the splash screen, we don't have the data. So how do we get the data? Um, so as uh, the uh, the previous tutorial, um, as I've shared with you, uh, we use what we call as a shared preference. So the email and password are basically being stored in a shared preference uh, throughout the application. Okay, So it means that the data is basically accessible through the shared preference. Uh, the email and password is basically available in the shared preference. So we can load the data uh, from the shared preference and try to log in with the data. Okay, we try to log in with the data and then we can use that information to check with the server, we check with the database if user uh, can be authenticated or not. So the splash page here has been updated with check and login method here through the init state. Um, and then the check and log in as implemented here will first one check the shared preference first if the preference is available or not. Okay, so check the remember me if it is true. So if the remember me is true, try to try to uh, log in. Okay, try to access uh, HTTP post request and try to log in. If the response status equal two hundred check the data if the data is a success and then we create the object here okay so if the data object is available we set the timer three second and then we can access the main page and pass the user data through the main page here however if the login is failed we can continue with unregistered information which is which you can create user object here with uh, the following information. So you can put anything here. 
So uh, we create user object, user ID zero, email with unregistered email, username with unregistered, user date right is equal nothing, user password is equal nothing. And we allow for the timer to run for three seconds and then go to the uh, main page. But here we pass this the, uh, object. So that's basically the, uh, the, the, the process if the checkbox is being checked. However, if the checkbox is unchecked, which is false, uh, we create again a user object and then we log in or we access the main page by passing the user or empty user data. So that's basically how uh, the auto login is being implemented. And if I try to let let me try let let try to remove the login credential first. Okay, now we, we remove the preference means that there's no data in the preference, and the RAM is set to false. So let me restart the application and let's see how the app responds. So there's no preference now. Try to. You can see that now the data, uh, the object data that passed to the main page here, which is the main page here, is now unregistered data. Okay, you can see unregistered and unregistered email because we print out that in our body section here. Uh, there are two data here, username and uh, user email. Um, and that basically comes from the um, user object here. So that's basically auto login and auto login basically allow user to, they don't have to remember the credential and the app will automatically log in if the credential is available. All right. So, um, and I think that's all for the um, auto login and also passing data between screens. Okay. So you can check uh, my code um, through my Git link um, at, uh, at the bottom and see you next time.